I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty outgoing guy, with an expansive array of acquaintances and chums and the like. This means a lot of my time is spent socializing and being the extrovert I so truly believe myself to be. I know what you're thinking. This probably attracts a fair bit of attention from the opposite sex, and to that, I have to of course refute and deny that allegation because, in truth, I get offers from gentlemen as well. It's truly fulfilling to be so universally appreciated and sought after. It honestly leaves little time to play obscure PC games, but I figured I'd treat myself to one little game to break up the monotony of not being completely and utterly alone. This looks promising. Corrosion Cold Winter Waiting, a first person horror adventure game. It's already got a title that could very well be a depressive post metal album. Uh, ordinarily, I try to give a little background on the developer, which is Viperante Creative Media, but I think this is their first completed game and they don't seem to have much of a website or anything. I'm sure these are all good signs. Corrosion Cold Winter Waiting is impatient to get you right to the interesting bit of the story. It forgoes any introduction or build of tension by giving you a short synopsis you leaf through before starting the actual game. I appreciate them considering that maybe I'm overly eager to just get down to the mystery. I mean, you gotta get me in the mood first. Ladies, am I right? I'm probably not. I'm never right, so. We play as the Deacon Oaks Sheriff, Alex Truman. While on his regular patrol, a man runs in front of his car and is hit by the sheriff. Without any identification or ability to speak, the mysterious man is placed in a mental hospital. The incident is almost forgotten when months later, the man begins to speak. All he can manage are the words, Cold Winter Farm which happens to be the name of a nearby property that the sheriff is familiar with. So, out of curiosity, I guess the sheriff investigates the farm, leading him to discover some kind of facility in the basement. Due to an intense snowstorm, Alex is stuck in the mysterious building, and this is where we are let loose. The creators clearly had a story they wanted to take center stage in this game, because it appears to be where the majority of the effort was placed, and it isn't slowly doled out to you. Exposition is handed out in big chunks of writing that you come across often, without giving away all the twists and turns. Beneath Cold Winter Farm is a basement facility belonging to a group called the Red Butterfly. This small collective, which is now mysteriously absent, was apparently tasked with secretly hunting down and torturing demons that are apparently real and make up about 50% of the world's population. You'll learn a lot about the rules and regulations of this group of equally unstable people and their activities and infighting. The whole time playing this, I couldn't not think about the movie Frailty. If you don't remember, it was a movie with Matthew McConaughey before the McConaughey's, where a family believes they are destroying demons based on their father's visions. It doesn't play out exactly the same, but I'd find it hard to believe that the creators had been at least familiar with it. It's a lot of fun ideas and could be shaped into something powerful, but I don't think the writing was up to par for such an interesting concept. In terms of it being an indie developer's first game, it's really not bad, but we've seen indie horror games accomplish a lot more with a lot less. I feel like Corrosion wanted you to think about the possibilities and consequences of these events being real, but nothing about it is believable or relatable. None of these characters seem to behave like people. They're all kind of vapid, broken monsters, really. You idiot this could have been disastrous we can't ever let one of these things escape do you know what would happen if one of them got out do you god you're such a pathetic loser sasha if donald knew how stupid you really were you know what he'd do not saying you couldn't make this concept work but more often than not i would think that this game was going for humor but i'm not sure now because it was funny but it's not like they telegraphed any jokes or anything look really i'm just trying not to be a dick because i laughed at the game i'm sorry and it's a pretty short game I finished it throughout the course of one really uneventful day. The most irksome thing about the story, and with a lot of stories, is that we are given this introduction explaining who we are and why we're there, but we serve no purpose in the story. The events already happened and we don't even have anything to say about it. We show up voiceless and characterless in the aftermath of some crazy stuff and then it just sort of cuts to black and the game's over. I mean, I guess we were trying to escape, but I forgot about that like five minutes in because it didn't seem all that important. Our protagonist didn't have anything to say about it, so I, I also don't think the title of the game has much meaning to it aside from it sounding really edgy. Nothing means anything. God's dead and we're alone. 
By all accounts, this is a traditional first-person point-and-click game, but it's routinely surprising how varied the rate of success for such a simple concept can be. It's a delicate balance making something so minimal feel satisfying. I can see this game turning a lot of people off from the beginning, as the first puzzle is a genuine math problem. Like, you need to write this out and solve it. I don't consider myself an unintelligent person, but math has always been a difficult thing for me to maintain attention on or care about. Like, I see the numbers, but they often just float off the page and become girls riding unicorns into a rainbow galaxy. This might be because of the numerous medications I take, but I think it's mostly because I don't care. It's boring. So, because the Red Butterfly wanted to make navigating their facility as convoluted as possible, each member is given a variety of keycards, one for every single door in the place, which is a lot of doors. We don't even get to see what's in two thirds of them. So not only do they have individual cards for individual doors, but everyone has a code that changes regularly that is to be used in conjunction with the card. As a security measure, everyone is given two randomly generated codes that must be decoded to give you one real code. This is accomplished by taking one of the codes, squaring each digit, then adding together the squared numbers, then adding the individual digits of the number together, then putting the total of the squares next to the sum of the total number of squares together. Does this sound like fun? Are you having fun? So just repeat that process with the next code. Once you have both codes, you place them on top of each other and subtract. The result is your code. This is not the only time you have to do this either. That puzzle is more of an annoyance than anything, but what really becomes bothersome is the logic behind some of the contraptions you rig together to progress. This sheriff has to have gone to some kind of MacGyver training course that teaches you to break ventilation shaft covers by bolting an oxygen tank to a table and hitting it with a sledgehammer? I don't get how you're meant to come to these conclusions. Maybe if this guy spoke and when he saw the vent and the table said something like, oh, maybe if I had some kind of projectile tube I could No, it makes no sense. There's also a great deal of running back and forth to computers and Googling things. You can make progress in this game when the game acknowledges that you've Googled something, even going as far as rewarding you with Steam achievements. By progress, I mean occasionally when you do this, a door in the facility will randomly become unlocked. Sometimes there will be Silent Hill style crossover sequences when everything gets rusty and old looking. And during this, you're forced to move in the direction it's leading you. And this also leads to a door being randomly unlocked. I think a lot of things were made convoluted to slow you down because they might have known they didn't have enough content. And I feel like maybe they were rushed to get this game out. It's not the worst. I sometimes felt a sense of accomplishment when I figured out the fuck they were thinking. Drab. You spend the entirety of this game in a very drab, uniform, unremarkable environment with lots of repeated visuals, which can sometimes cause confusion. Honestly, I don't have a problem with the way it looks. It's a look I'm comfortable with and familiar with. The sort of vague 90s, early 2000s space where either answer wouldn't surprise me. Animation is almost non-existent, so there is very little to make this place feel alive. It doesn't feel like people have been living in it for months. It feels cold and sterilized. Maybe that was the intention? I don't know. I feel like the only clue that people were living here was an empty pizza box. But these guys made a game and I didn't, so who am I to question this reasoning? For being a horror game, the most startling parts for me involved unexpected sound effects, not even scary ones. I don't know if these were meant to be louder than everything and scarier than everything, but they were and it was not cool. I'm easily startled. I think it comes from all those years in the jungle. 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 So yeah, it doesn't look or sound offensively bad. It's actually sort of nice if you think of it as a throwback, but Corrosion is a noble effort at using classic adventure gameplay to tell an honestly 
pretty fucked up story. I mean, the motivation for a lot of it requires you to accept cartoon characters as real people, but if you manage to do that, it's a downer. Like no matter how you choose to interpret it, a lot of terrible shit happens. It's not great storytelling, but I would say it's an interesting and original story you probably haven't seen in a game. If you can get past some eye-rolling puzzles, you can find some solid gameplay for the genre. It's a little repetitive, and it's a tough game to recommend because it feels very virginal. This is clearly the first attempt at making a game, and I want to see these guys make more and get better at this. It shows promise, but I still, I don't want to go back there.